All right, folks, here we go. It is October 2nd, 2020, and uh, give you a quick update. The um, I guess the main thing I wanted to look at this week, um, if you took a look at the route that I did last week, um, the major thing that held me up was the second one of these light puzzles. So I, I spent a decent amount of time like trying to like figure out the logic of both of these light puzzles, and I guess... I just kind of want to give a quick update and just kind of like uh, go over the two light puzzles so I don't have to explain it ever again and um, just kind of I guess to show like the bizarre logic of both of them um, and kind of the math behind that logic I'll kind of briefly talk about um, but not show it completely because I couldn't completely figure it out to be honest. Um, so yeah, the first light puzzle here, the, ob the objective of this is to have it, to have, uh, this one light be, um, off while everything else to be turned on. So kind of like a, a donut shape, I guess, if you want to call it. And basically like the general, like logic is if you hit the middle button, it's going to change all four of these corner buttons as so and if you hit one of these corner buttons it will change the opposite um, I guess side buttons like so and so you you kinda wanna fiddle around with this thing until you kind of get it to be the pattern that you want it to be at um, there's a couple of things that I look at for the most part as far as how to approach solving it and the best way if I can kind of line it up correctly it, yeah so, so the best way is to get it into this shape right here um, so you know you get this nice plus thing and all you have to do is hit this middle button and then this will go off and then these four will go back on thus completing the puzzle um, I'm gonna reset here just to get another um, idea of it and kind of the best way I found in getting it to be that layout, um, this one might be tough, um, is when it kind of does like a symmetrical thing like this, it's best to go on kind of opposite, like just pick an opposite side and just kind of like work your way through it. Um, and I, I say that, but I might not be able to uh, completely do it off the top of my head. Um, yeah, this works. Yeah, so now from here, I can pretty easily figure out how to get to that plus shape. Um, and another general tip or strategy is when you have, let's say, four of these lit up and you want to unlight them, you just go around in a circle and it will get you the configuration that I'm looking for and I just push this button and once again solve this puzzle um, and that goes for let's say let's say I have this and I'm, I'm looking for the plus well I just go around the horn here and I get back to my plus here so it's it's kind of those patterns that I look for when trying to solve this um, there's let's see if I can get another one this is off right here but let's say well this is on right here but let's say if this is off um, a real easy strategy for these ones where it's this and this is just to once again just do like a symmetrical button push and now we have everything that we need except for this one right here and if I can eh, I don't know if I like this or not Let's see what happens yeah and then this and then from here I could yeah I get this thing again and then I'd have to go around the horn twice so I don't know I've, I've kind of explained this one's pretty simple so I've kind of explained the logic of that one and, and kind of like what's running through my head when I approach that one um, and Let's see if I can, okay, I can't do that. So if I load this back up. Um, so I did a decent amount of research on this and one of the things that I found, um, let me just go to this YouTube video here. 
um, you can break this out into a math problem so I, I have this um, uh, YouTube video I'll, I'll link it down below but basically what he does is he, he breaks it down into um, lin uh, pretty much a linear algebra problem where um, you've got three by three here so there's nine different lights that can be on and can't be on so imagine each of these being a button one two three four five six seven eight nine and then let's say you push button one here this, this is operating on like a different rule set so let's say if you push one here then it affects one uh, it will uh, change two from being on to being off so it affects two doesn't affect three it changes four it goes from on to off and then the rest it doesn't affect it and and it kind of you do that button by button and set it up like this and then you do a whole bunch of math here a whole bunch of math so you can kind of get the uh, um, let's see at the end here do, 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 do. I guess it's the very end of the video so basically at the at the very end of the video you, you set this up into a giant uh, math equation here and you want to get one here one here one here one here one here and then zeros across the uh, the rest of the row and then you can have your equation here to the side and basically what I wanted to do was to set this up for this problem and then have something like an Excel spreadsheet or uh, like an iPhone app or something like that um, and I could just like plug the numbers in from uh, BioForge here and then just like solve it through some computer program off to the side so I can like quickly solve it um, but unfortunately I, I I think it can be done but maybe I might just not be I might be missing some kind of uh, logic but basically when I put in the uh, rows from BioForge and the logic from BioForge two of these rows equal each other so it's kind of hard to get it down to that uh, um, what is it called I forgot I'm a math major you, you, I, I have a math degree so just just believe me when I say uh, it can't be done right now unless I'm forgetting something which that could be entirely possible um, but then it's kind of like uh, it might be it's most likely quicker just to kind of do it through here just through like pattern recognition uh, and um, this is random so it, it gives me a random uh, pattern each time but like this one's not the greatest one so I might reset it once or twice to get something that is symmetrical like this I think it gave us the same exact puzzle earlier so we can kind of work our way to uh, getting something that we want um, yeah, this solves it right here. Um, so I've I've kind of done that enough times to just kind of like get that logic. Um, but on my other run that I did last week, we got to the second puzzle, and I honestly I had no clue what the logic to that puzzle was. Um, so I spent a little bit of time this week, and it makes a lot more sense to me. Basically, it's the same 3x3 three three puzzle, but there's different logic going on here to where um, it depends on, it, it looks more at rows and diagonals and columns than the last one did. So it starts out assuming that 5 was the thing that you hit last. So when you hit something in a row and then hit another button in the row the two buttons light up so it started at five then I hit six here and six and four lit up so I hit six last so if I hit nine down here nine and three light up right and then nine I hit this last so this and this should change right so let's see and I hit what I hit last this so diagonals work like that 
um, and then I think when you hit from a diagonal three here down to an eight here, I think it changes either this or this or this or this, which I'm I don't remember. All right, so I hit that and that, right? Okay. So and and the idea is you want to have the top row lit up and the bottom row lit up, and then the middle row stays unlit, right? So. And the logic of like hitting, so it starts at five here. So if I hit five again, like I'm not sure what that logic is. It's some completely different thing, but I just try not to dwell on it too much. Um, so yeah let's let's start here and now that I know the logic I'm a little bit faster at this now so and, and I say that and you know now I'm kinda like blanking on some of this stuff so I hit five there and then if I hit that uh, oh god and this is a nightmare so that changes that okay so that changes those two and I hit that last, I think. No, I hit that last. So I want to change these two. So I hit either one of these two, and it should solve it, right? Okay. Um. So now that I get the logic behind that, like I still think that that would be faster to solve than like putting it off into an Excel spreadsheet on the side. Um. So just one more puzzle here. It starts. It starts off assuming that you hit five here. Um, so I could hit um, this and light this up and delight these two. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, it didn't delight those two. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so I hit that last, so I can change these two. And then what happens if I do that? Ah. It's tricky. Okay, so I hit that, so I can change these two, and then I can change these two, right? That's uh, that second puzzle is a bit more brute forcey, um, but I still think I can manage, and you know, hopefully get lucky with like an easy pattern to start out with. Um, so yeah, I think the next step is going to be finalizing my uh, my move set I guess against each enemy that I'm forced to fight in the game and then I think from there I'm going to be good to start trying to attempt runs like serious runs to beat the world record so I uh, just wanted to, I guess you know this is a quick update this week um, but uh, I'm, I'm well on my way I, th I think I'm going to uh, in, in a couple of weeks, I, I think it's going to be time to uh, go for the record and, and be immortalized on uh, speedruns.com. So uh, I'm, I think I'm going to set up a live stream probably on a Monday because um, I took a, a couple of days off from work. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend an entire day on Monday. Um, well, what is it? Monday the 12th yeah the 12th 12th and 13th is going to be my days that I'll be doing my live streams um, it's going to be on uh, my YouTube channel so uh, stay tuned and watch out for more Bioforge with me stay safe